Hello there, my fellow artillery aficionados, and welcome back to our venerable series about Imperial Guard vehicles. Unfortunately, this entire series is coming close to its twilight years, so to speak. In fact, we have already covered, I'd say, 75% of all the vehicles in the Imperial Guard or at least the ones with a decent amount of lore behind them. Not to worry though, as I still have at least three or four or even more videos planned on some vehicles I haven't covered yet. Today's topic though is gonna deal with some siege and artillery vehicles once again. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Colossus and the Bombard. These are not their full names though, but you'll discover those in a moment. These two are actually very similar to each other, and that is why I put them in the same video. Also, there isn't a lot of lore behind them, even when combined, so I do apologize if the video will end up a bit shorter than usual. All that being said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Colossus, also known as the Colossus Bombard or the Colossus Siege Tank, is an open-topped, self-propelled artillery piece commonly used by the regiments of the Imperial Guard. It also has the distinction of being one of the oldest and most renowned siege weapons that are still in use in the 41st millennium. The vehicle is usually deployed by the Guard during sieges of fortified enemy emplacements, and against structures being used as cover by the enemy during urban combat. The Colossus is armed with one of the largest and most powerful mortars used by the Imperial Guard forces, known as the Colossus Siege Mortar. It is based on the common Chimera armored personnel carrier chassis. Just like the Imperial Bombard mobile artillery piece, it has a crane installed on its rear, to lift its heavy siege shells and move them into place to be loaded into the siege mortar. The Colossus and the Bombard are almost identical in appearance, leading to many cases of mistaken identity between the two of them when they share the same battlefield. The Colossus is armed and named after the weapon that it carries, the just mentioned Colossus Siege Mortar. The weapon fires special high concussion shells, which, upon impact, creates explosive shockwaves that are capable of crushing bone, cracking rocks, and pulping flesh. The weapon is mostly used to destroy enemy infantry while in cover, since the shockwaves produced by the Colossus's shells are able to kill their softer targets without even destroying their hard cover. The Colossus is also capable of destroying even fortified targets, crushing the defenders beneath tons of rubble and debris if the shockwave doesn't kill them first. Its range is equal to that of the much more common Basilisk artillery piece, and like most mortar weapons, it isn't capable of firing exactly at a specific target. The Colossus is also equipped with a hull-mounted heavy bolter, which can be replaced by a heavy flamer. It can also be outfitted with camouflage netting, an enclosed crew compartment, the ubiquitous hunter-killer missile launcher, a dozer blade, extra armor plating, and another pintle-mounted heavy stubber or storm bolter. A famous formation utilizing this vehicle, but not restricted just to this vehicle, is known as the Emperor's Wrath Artillery Company. This unit will begin the Imperial Guard's march to war, preceding the troops and vehicles with a thunderous barrage of heavy artillery fire. The battlefield is turned into a smoking, crater-strewn ruin, among which the enemy can find no cover or shelter from the death raining down upon them. These bombardments can last for solar hours, days, weeks, or even months, and very few can withstand the sheer destruction that is unleashed. The companies usually consist of three ordnance batteries, with each battery composed of up to three Basilisk or Colossus artillery tanks and a single Chimera command tank. Unfortunately, this is all on the Colossus. Since the thing is very similar to the Bombard, at least in terms of dimensions, I will only mention the technical specs of the Bombard at the end. The Bombard Unlike many other Imperial artillery pieces, 
The Bombard Heavy Siege Mortar is built upon the larger and more robust Lehman Russ battle tank chassis rather than the more commonly employed but less load-bearing Chimera chassis. Even then, the Lehman Russ chassis has been heavily modified to accommodate the massive weight of the siege mortar. Despite all the modifications, the Bombard still moves very slowly compared with other Imperial tracked vehicles. Though the tank's engine and tracks provide the Bombard with some limited mobility, its extremely slow speed means that it cannot be considered a true self-propelled artillery vehicle, because it cannot fire while on the move. The Bombard should also not be confused with the Colossus Siege Tank, which is very similar in appearance, but uses a smaller weapon known as the Colossus Siege Mortar. A Bombard is normally crewed by only one guy, aka the driver. The rest of the Bombard's gunners and crew follow in standard armored transport vehicles, such as Chimeras or Centaurs, and work outside the Bombard's cramped interior. Most of a Bombard's gunnery crew are occupied with loading the siege mortar's ammunition, while the gunner aims the weapon at the target. Loading a Bombard is a very time-consuming process, as every shell is far too heavy to be lifted by a man on his own. As such, the Bombard, just like the Colossus, actually incorporates a small crane into its mechanisms, to move the shells into its breach. As the Bombard lacks mobility and requires a Herculean effort to reload, it is obviously not deployed along the Imperial front line. Due to these limitations, Bombards are only deployed for the sustained bombardment of completely static targets such as an enemy fortification or an enemy-held urban area. Once they are deployed, a Bombard battery will remain in place, and will pound its target into oblivion without remorse. Launching its shells over huge distances, the pounding of a Bombard battery can quickly reduce the enemy walls and fortifications to so much rubble. The Bombard includes other features such as a large recoil spade that wedges into the ground and helps absorb the massive gun's powerful recoil, to stop it from rolling backwards with every shot. Since the Bombard is not designed as a frontline unit, it is not equipped with any weapon for self-defense, but it may be fitted on the fly with a pintle-mounted weapon for crew defense in case the Imperial lines get overrun. Many other Imperial vehicles are required to support the deployment of a battery of Bombards, such as the APCs transporting the Bombard's crew. Trojans will be used to tow large trailers filled with Bombard ammunition, while Sentinel power lifters will be used to load supplies for the battery. Salamander scout vehicles may be on hand to serve the needs of the battery's forward observation team and an Atlas recovery vehicle may be present to help move a Bombard if one of the massive guns should become bogged down or has burnt out the engine. An Imperial Guard siege artillery company centered around Bombards is essentially a small army in its own right. The Bombard's one and only weapon is the massive Heavy Siege Mortar, which is a much larger variant of the Heavy Mortar Cannon. Although the weapon is similar in appearance to the aforementioned Colossus Siege Mortar used by the other vehicle from today's video, it is actually much larger and heavier, meaning that it is unable to be mounted on the Chimera chassis even if they wanted to. While the Bombard carries no other weapons, it can be outfitted with a pintle mounted heavy stubber or storm boulder, and, you guessed it, a hunter killer missile launcher. The tank can also accept the other, usual enhancements as well, such as camouflage netting, rough terrain modifications, track guards, extra armor plating, smoke launchers, and a searchlight. As a last line of defense, the Bombard's crew are also equipped with Imperial standard weapons like the last gun and the last pistol to fend off the enemy as a last resort. This vehicle is able to use several types of ammo, including, but not limited to, the following couple. The High Explosive Shell These are the standard shells used by most heavy mortar weapons of the Imperium. They are more than capable of destroying infantry units and even vehicles caught in the blast radius. The high explosive shells fired by the Bombard are some of the largest used and are capable of creating a huge blast radius where they land destroying anything caught within. The Siege Shell 
These are obviously used against enemy structures and fortifications. They are made to explode after impact, causing damage to the building foundation. As with all the other shells fired from the Bombard's mighty weapon, they are able to do damage in a much larger radius than the more common sized shells. During the Taros campaign against the Tau Empire, the 17th Talarn Desert Raiders Regiment made heavy use of the Bombard. They possessed a heavy artillery company which had six of them in its order of battle. These heavy guns were intended to be kept in reserve for the final imperial siege of the planet's capital of Tarokin. They were ultimately deployed and used on the regiment's assault of Pyra Heights, where they bombarded the Tau positions in the hills. It is not known how effective the bombard's fire proved to be against the Tau Krut mercenaries holding those positions. All six bombards were abandoned by the 17th Talarn when the regiment was forced to retreat. Finally, some technical specifications for this vehicle include There are 17 known patterns Its crew consists of one guy, the driver Its power plant is an HL270 V12 multi-fuel It weighs 71 tons Its length is 7.7 .7 meters Its width is 4.8 meters Its height is 4.7 meters its maximum speed on road is 24 km an hour. Its maximum speed off road is 12 km an hour. Its elevation is between 10 and 70 degrees. Its superstructure armor is 100 mm. And its hull armor is 150 mm. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Bombard and the Colossus artillery tanks for today. Are you a fan of either of these two vehicles? What do you like or dislike most about them? As always, feel free to share any thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you'd like to help me keep the channel alive and bring you continuous lore videos, please consider visiting my Patreon page the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a peaceful and awesome day. The Emperor Protects.